All right, welcome to the technically the third edition of Tune Diving Live. Um, there was a second which I can't upload yet due to copyright restrictions, but hopefully I can upload that soon as well. But this is the second one that will be uploaded and the third one that we're doing as part of the series where we take a look at the DAW sessions um, from the composers slash producers themselves. And I'm really, really excited about today's session. Uh, it's uh, about one of my favorite songs over the past few years, I have to say, uh, from an absolute genius of a musician. Today we'll be looking at the song Gaganduan Duan, uh, sung by the legendary Bombay Jeshi with lyrics by uh, Pritka Dixit and composed, arranged, produced, mixed, and like everything by our guest today, P. Prasanna. Thank you so, so much for taking the time to do this. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. All right. So before we dive into the session itself, um, I, I'm just curious to know, just to get some background on the song and, and kind of how it came about. So what were the kind of like first inspirations that led to this? When did this start? Um, could you just kind of take us through that, that journey briefly? Yeah, so uh, initially, um, I mean, Bombay Joshi ma'am just, he, she called me one day and she said, we can work on something. Uh, but the th thing is, at that time, I had already had a, a few ideas where I thought it would be great to have a voice on. And uh, also at that point in time, I was listening to a particular kind of music, uh, you know, uh, the romantic era classical music a lot. Um, so I wanted to do a song in that flavor and stuff. So, I mean, that's like the initial, and I remember having a visual of, uh, of, of doing something cyclic, like a person sitting in a room and then the, the light changes from morning to afternoon to like early morning to afternoon to night and just, just, you know, through mm -hmm. the day and how the light falls in the room in different ways and Initially, that was the idea. I thought I can just do something like that. And, and uh, but yeah, then it slowly evolved and it, it got into this. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big jump from uh, yeah. <laughs> something that, that represents a cycle to this kind of magnum opus. You know, I, in fact, if, I, think, I think it sort of reflects in the video even now. Yeah. If you That's notice the, the time, it starts from very early morning to noon and then there's a, a early early afternoon or early evening sort of thing mm. and then it goes to night so the, it, it it is there but right. uh yeah i mean it just probably spilled through to the final thing but but yeah i think essentially the idea was because she has a very uh, very haunting quality in her voice right. and uh, i just thought that along with some uh, very melancholic or not not even melancholic, dramatic woodwinds and strings and that kind of a thing I thought it will have a vibe I mean I'm just speaking about a few you know when you start off with an idea you don't have concrete ideas you right. don't know you're, like, you're not really getting into the tune and stuff like that so there are some initial thoughts that you get and then you have them in the back of your mind and then you start working on it you know we write the tune and then you go one by one but all these things sort of come through at some stage or the other so right. yeah so through pretty much throughout the whole process of making the song you had kind of Bombay Jishi Mam's voice and, and the qualities yeah, yeah. in her voice on the forefront this was no this was actually done for her singing only for her voice so I, I checked out her other recordings and I explored like what is the range she's how she sounds in different ranges and stuff and uh, also um, she has that uh, unique capability i feel that you know she can actually deliver a standing note really brilliantly like you mm -hmm. just ask her to stand on a note for long her vibrato really makes it engaging to listen to Interesting. You know what i'm saying Right, right, yeah. Apart from the very melodic Indian stuff, which she can obviously sing brilliantly, I thought this, so that's why I thought, you know, we should really capture all these, um, the her strengths and 
sort of i mean it was not done consciously but all these things are in the back of your mind <laughs> so when you do it it sort of comes through in some way or the other yeah right right that's very true yeah that's not something i've noticed consciously but now that you say it the, the kind of uh when she holds a long note it is very captivating yeah. due to the vibrato yeah, for sure yeah. all right so with a bit of context now established um let let's dive into the session okay so um it's a big session <laughs> for yeah. sure um did 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 you imagine it to be this big or did it just kind of grow and grow when it ended up that way um see the moment you're you're including uh, the various parts of the orchestra it already yeah. acquires a certain size fair but but here maybe one, what one of the things is uh, because i also i i wanted it to be a song and not uh, not an, it's not an instrumental piece where i'm writing for one palette like an orchestra so uh one thought that i had was if i can make it some kind of a melting pot of various instruments so this has pretty much every family of acoustic instrument and some synths as well so there these I mean piano, and then there's a steel guitar and a nylon guitar. There's ukulele, and there are these tremolos, uh, which we tracked in the ukulele only, and the nylon guitar. And uh, there's a harmonium, and there's a, a celesta, and then the synths are there, and then there's backing vocals, and some SFX, and and then the full orchestra, the brass, strings, woodwinds, and all that stuff. so when you have the the idea i thought if if i can sort of do a a mic mic like a, what do you call a melting pot of various sounds but find a way to make it it's it shouldn't it shouldn't stick out it should should come together so it was just a you know like it was just i would say a, an ambitious ambitious idea to start with and uh, i just thought i'll just experiment with that the thing is the the challenge was to find the organic flow but the thing is i mean all this I'm, when i'm talking about it 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 sounds like i really um, thought about it and did it but many times you know you have these things in the back of your mind and when you're doing it the right proportion of each idea comes through mm-hmm. so i think that's how it works yeah but yeah i didn't i didn't expect that because of first of all i didn't think that i would be mixing the track mm. so when i got down to mixing it yes i did realize the size of the session and it was quite um yeah challenging but i also enjoyed it because it's the first time i'm mixing my tracks so i enjoyed it yeah yeah that that's something i i've noticed while working on music you only notice how how large a project is when it gets to the mixing stage yeah. when you yeah. when you have to bounce stems and yeah. you're like oh no yeah. i have to bounce like <laughs> way more stems yeah. than i thought yeah, yeah for sure all right so let let's get into the song itself um sure. so perhaps let's just play it section by section and uh and then once we kind of listen to a certain section we'll we'll dissect that section a little bit stop there yeah we stopped right as the song was starting to spice up but <laughs> uh let, let's let's take a look at this section um so the opening it's it's very kind of string centered um mo- most of the strings played by keba if i'm correct keba jermaya yes. um so in in the process of of recording him with mm-hmm. with the opening section that that we're looking at how much of it did you kind of notate yourself and how much of it did you kind of leave, leave up to him no actually all the parts were notated 
Yeah, I see. I okay. Scratch and yeah. So pretty much everything. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So could could we take a listen to some of the individual layers there? Sure. So the, basically the opening starts with the nylon guitar. So yeah. I tracked both the nylon and the acoustic for the same. But uh, the opening, I wanted to be a little dirty. So I also had some guitar SFX. So I start with the slide. But if you notice, also, there is a little steel guitar that slightly adds. I just wanted a little of the twang of the guitar, slightly. Wait, wait. Yeah. On the left. Oh, yeah. So it does, it definitely, it, it does feel like just the nylon guitar, but the acoustic guitar just adds a little shimmer, you know. Mm -hmm. just, just for the phrase to cut through just a little bit more, just for flavor. So. Right, right. Interesting. And generally, we recorded some SFX parts like this. So, yeah, if you notice, uh, uh, the SFX parts just, just add some dirt to the thing. Right, right. I just wanted to be a little uh, casual at the start. Mm. And then and then it fades out. Maybe one thing I can point out here is. I had this going on because I wanted, uh, you know, when this ends, you feel like you've gone from a realistic space to a very song space. Mm -hmm. So if you notice, uh, so basically the, the, the pattern goes from the guitars to the, to the soft the piano. piano. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Because this SFX ends. Just wait, 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 wait. You know, the, there's a, the, the, the rain sound effect and then as it fades out, it feels like a room tone and then it's fully gone. Wait, wait, wait. Interesting. It's just well, to... Because when you're that Gulmohar say, that's, I mean, it's just to give some activity in the sonic scape and it's not the stuff that you notice, mm. you know, it's like walking into a theater sort of thing. It, it's a just theater. like a transition of, of a certain atmosphere to, to a different exactly. space. Right. Yeah. Right. Something like that. Yeah. Interesting. How, how is the, I mean, it's, it's not anything technical, but like the transition between the, the nylon guitar playing those arpeggios and going into the soft piano is just super smooth. I mean, it's probably just automation, but. <laughs> Actually, you know, it's, it, uh, it's more of, uh, you see, for example, this part, there is an overlap. Yeah, it's just about, it's like hand holding and then sort of leaving, you know? Right, so right, right, right. Smoother. Also, it works because this is a pretty hollow sounding instrument. So mm -hmm. even if I had layered it throughout with the guitars, it would have still worked in another way. Right, so right, right. So it becomes easier, which probably if I was transitioning from a guitar to a piano, that would have been a lot more difficult. Difficult. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But this sort of and also it gives a different perspective. I don't know how to put it. Um, you know, the, the guitar is on your face, and then this is somewhere a little far away because of the nature of the instrument. Right, 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 right. And then it, it's it's just that um, it's just to make things a little three uh, D. Mm. 
Mm, mm. Yeah, something like that. What is Wait. this this patch exactly? Sorry, I, is it just a like a the the soft piano? What's it yeah. from? Is it is it a oh, logic no, patch? No, it's, a, it's a keyscape uh, Celesta thing. Ah, okay, 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 okay. That makes sense. Yeah, they've got some very beautiful Celesta tones. Mm. Because usually Celesta, we we only use it uh, as embellishments and orchestral stuff. I mean, usually, right, right. I, I mean, the usually that I am used to. But mm. it's also if you actually take the Celesta, it's it's actually a very nice instrument. Even you can use it as a backing or a solo or stuff like that. So, in the especially in the lower octaves, it has a very round tone, which is very beautiful. So I just thought interesting. Okay with that, yeah. All right. Um. Is is there anything else in in this section before the the melody comes in? No. So basically, here the idea is um, I want to introduce the main motive, which is this. Right. See, this motive actually, this whole section, if you see both the guitars and this motive. It's a very major six kind of vibe. Yeah. It's a very Mohanam kind of vibe, and not a major seven. So there's no. So just to embellish that and get into that mode, mm -hmm. and also um, there is this piece called Morning Mode by Edward Grieg. Okay. So that also has a very similar flavor. So and I just wanted to sort of get that vibe into the song. So I went for this very major six. Sort of thing, and th th this motif is also something that uh, you know it gets repeated in different contexts. Yes. So it's it's just something that that binds things together. So mm. yeah, something like that. Yeah. Is there something to like? Um, I, I we'll, we'll talk about the next section in a bit, but the next section has a very major seven color. Yeah. Yeah. So it what was? It's mm -hmm. like. No, I mean, so the thing is, when when you're not showing one aspect of the scale, and then you're suddenly showing it, it's like, you know, you're you're creating a certain vacuum in a space and then filling it. It feels more uh, liberating mm -hmm. when you bring it to seven like that. So that that comes straight away in the verse. So if you take this chord, yeah, this is a major seven, straight major seven, right? So but if I had done it earlier, you won't really feel it over here. So uh, the major six and the major seven are two color additions to the major scale. It just de details out the mode a little bit more, right? Uh, uh, in different ways, and and you, when you when you sort of alternate with from the major six to the major seven, it feels more relieving. Mm -hmm. and it sort of emphasizes the beginning of something new, which is here the song. So yeah. गगन धुआं धुआं कहे है दास्ता गुलमुहर से घिर रही है फजा या समथिंग दैट रियली स्ट्रक मी अबाउट द द वे यू डिड द पियानो अरेंजमेंट्स हियर uh, for, firstly, just just the way you voice the chords, it, it's so beautiful. Like, what's it on the on the piano? It sounds. Have you taken out the fifth or something on the opening A major, A major seven? Or no, no, I have. It sounds like G sharp A, C sharp. Or maybe it's just the introduction of the of the seventh that gives it that color. But it's actually it's got a ninth as well in it. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, I think the velocity is pretty low. I mean, actually, this is the usual way I play the chords of the keyboard. <laughs> I didn't uh, really work on this, but. Wait, wait. Yeah, this again. I'm just going to the fourth, and I usually add a sixth when I'm going to the fourth. Uh, so Mother Saripa, I don't. Okay, I look at a lot of chords in Carnatic. 
mm-hmm. uh, okay perspective so right i mean I, I, of course when i'm talking to keba i will convert this into a man can you play a, a d major 6 add 9 or something like that right 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 But that's not the way i'm thinking in my head interesting so for me i'm thinking of it as mother saripa uh, so so yeah i mean oh okay yeah. there there is this tension throughout the song between the a major and and the d major so yeah, I, yeah. I, it's kind of introducing that a little bit right right interesting also, I mean, but I, I mean, I, the thing is, um, see, when you're harmonizing, generally, um, I mean, I don't think I don't plan in terms of the colors so much straight away, but I definitely have a basic idea of what the chords are going to be. So, let's say the reduced version of it would be a A major and a D major, right? Right. But the what exact colors are going to come? That's very contextual. So. i keep changing it depend on uh where and when it comes so suppose if i feel i need to go for a d major 7 instead of a d major 6 and 9 which i've done in this case mm-hmm. um then i might just do that but it really depends on what the vocal is and what the context is and which note i'm going to show which note's going to follow a little later right, so with right. the little colors i just take a call um you know based on the situation so Uh, but yeah the, the rudimentary uh, thing is you it's it's a a to d and then right. it, you know th- that gives you the very basic emotion right and minor aspects i i decide based on the context yeah so like did you record the vocals and then add like certain harmonies based on like what the vocal sounded like for example okay so usually for these kind of tracks i mm-hmm. prepare a full scratch Okay. In fact, I am singing in my head, or I sing out when I'm in my room, mm-hmm. and based on that, I finish the arrangement. So, okay, I don't revisit that arrangement. I mean, unless I'm getting a new idea. But uh, so pretty much these things are taken care of uh, the programming stage, because I anyway, see. I'm singing it in my room, and of course, so sometimes it it does happen that once I record the vocalist, uh, some things may. change but mm. it's it's not so much it's usually done in the programming stage yeah. i see yeah something else i love about this piano part is so the the basic as you described like the reduced chords would be a major d major and this yeah. kind of implied e major before going into the next line but you don't actually play the e major you just play the fifth the b Yeah. Oh. Um. Well, let me just listen to it. It's a suspended sort of thing. So, in a lot of places, I've used the suspended more than committing to a, a you know, fifth major or something. Right. Right. The suspended sort of keeps you. Uh, I mean, I I like it. I mean, it's just a taste preference. <laughs> it's not so much as to there's no. Uh, I mean, I could have done with a regular E major as well. Yeah, does not committing anything there. Yeah. I, I was talking about the the part before. So. Oh. Oh yeah, I'm not going going with anything over there actually. I'm just playing a re in the piano. That's it. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was really beautiful. That like just the, the space. I took that as an implied E major, but no, e- I don't think of it as E major at all. Okay, okay, I see. This is I'm just still in D, mm. and I'm just uh, hitting the B note. That's about it. I see. I see. Yeah. So the way I'm looking at it is this entire portion is a scale in D. So it's a Mohanam sort of thing from, mm. let's say, this bar over here. So if you listen to this, see that you still hear the sustain of the D, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then on top of that, you hear the B. 
so uh, yeah i am just looking at it as everything happening over d mm-hmm. yeah because a, a e shift there would be a big shift and and over here the vocals are sort of breathing if you notice over here kahe hai daasta gul muhar so a moment there would be huge so wait 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 i want to stay in a meditative zone and just keep it two chords that's about it mm mm-hmm. yeah that makes also, sense the piano was arranged for piano and guitar so if it was just piano obviously i wouldn't have i would have probably slightly changed it up right so here this part the piano interacts with the guitar and that's the vibe gul muhar se ghir rahi So guitar is providing all the activity. Mm-hmm. The piano is giving sort of the bed sort of thing. Right, right. So yeah, it's it's interesting when you explore uh, harmony in two uh, sonorities. So mm. one can take a more dynamic role and one takes the basic role. So right, right. It becomes easier to listen to if you do the same thing in one instrument. It will sound a lot more busy. Mm. so when you change the colors and even if you get more busy it will just feel like a flavor i don't know how to put it, but something like that no no that that makes sense it's it's just yeah. balancing things out yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. spreading yeah. things around across different instruments yeah 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 and here also the guitar imitates the vocal a little bit if you take the see the gul mohar so there is a little tar 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 that keeps happening oh yeah 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 asta gul mohar se yeah that's what the gul mohar like it are just so just stuff like that i mean yeah right I mean, right they're all instinctive choices but when when i look back uh, and when i talk about it it might sound like very uh, considered choices but many times you, you you when you're doing it in the flow certain things just happen and then you mm. it. I mean, it's a combination of your judgment and your instinct so it just has to work in tandem Right. Yeah, that that fall was like when I played that fall in isolation. So I think it's like it's what G E C sharp F. But so when I was playing it like that, it sounded strange. But when I listened to it with the song, it just worked. I think I would have gone for a chin chinnani over there once again. Oh, oops. Sorry, sorry. It's a uh, knee uh, two only, not in. Sorry. Mm. Yeah. I don't remember the exact notes, but something like that. Very, very, very. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So even these small, uh, like embellishments you you wrote in beforehand. Yeah, yeah. The, the whole thing was programmed because actually it's not. It's more of a. i mean this one is actually like a written part kind of thing right mm-hmm. so yeah i mean this is all pre planned right right interesting i mean for this see there are some tracks where there is space for the the let's say the particular instrument to breathe mm-hmm. yeah. breathe as in bring in different flavors and it will still stand right but here it's all in delicate balance so mm-hmm. you can't um you have to sort of change too many things on uh, at the production stage you right, have right. to you have to stick to the score but let's say if i'm doing a different kind of a track where there's more space and the 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 intent of the arrangement is a little different mm-hmm. over there yeah we can explore different ideas and stuff like that mm-hmm. yeah, this one is pretty much locked to the score harmonically it's kind i don't know if fragile is the right word but like it's it's yeah, everything's held together on like a thin yeah, string yeah it's a delicate balance right yeah. right so yeah and and keba is one amazing thing about him is you give him any voicing he'll fig- figure out a way to play it and oh. he's just i think he's the most music producer friendly guitarist 
and his tone i mean his his clarity in playing is extraordinary and mm. and he always finds a way to do the stuff i think that's pretty amazing about him yeah is there anything else in the in the kind of opening section of the of the melody that we've missed out on or is that so is it I mainly mean, mm-hmm. i i talking about the verse we've not gone to the remaining parts yeah exactly yeah so for me this verse a is like one chunk because i'm playing the same okay uh, uh we call it sandam in tamil mm-hmm. uh, i guess it's motif in english so da 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 so the da 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 that's the that's the length of the phrase right right so that keeps repeating da 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 so for me it's like uh, you you sustain that and then mm-hmm. you take you take the melody through variations of harmony and even scales and stuff like that and then it culminates into a into an ending so the mm-hmm. entire verse for me is like uh, yeah it's one thing which keeps developing sort of i see yeah all right then i suppose then uh, let's take a listen to the 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 verse as a whole that would probably yeah. be better okay. right yeah, yeah. गगन धुआं धुआं कहे है दासता गुरमुहर से घिर रही है फजा अधूरी बारिशी basically um over here the thing is uh, the first part of it is very pleasant major scale right right thing. and then aduri barish onwards it gets i mean actually the thing is these ideas came after the lyric was uh locked i so, see okay in the sense i had the tune and the chords uh-huh. but how it's going to be expressed like the piano goes away here practically everything goes away and we just have this tremolos and um you know just a little the the celesta alone here it, it mm-hmm. suddenly creates a lot of space over here right it's suddenly you you remove everything and and so these these ideas came once the lyrics was there mm-hmm. because aduri barish means unfinished rains uh and pana ram pe that died on on the way so it's slightly melancholic and stuff mm-hmm. so, you know i just wanted to create some drama over here by removing the the guitars and the, the piano that the back especially when you take out the low end It, i i feel i always feel it creates a curiosity mm-hmm. so what expressed these harmonies over here this way and also this this palette of harmonium and uh, the celesta and the tremolos is very i i don't know where or how i've i've heard this but i think this palette is a very dramatic palette i don't know why <laughs> maybe somewhere some musicals i might have heard i don't mm-hmm. know but yeah so that's the idea over here and and also it's very interesting when you express your chords um indirectly so instead of just strumming the chord or playing the yeah, piano yeah yeah very barish eh uh when you play it this way it's you, you don't i mean it, it just takes you into the mood and you don't know what chord it is technically right right you know so i mean technically the chord is um sorry 
C sharp major. And then the next chord is actually the. This is three notes. So these three notes are. It's it's I it's technically a A dominant nine, but without the A and the E. I don't know how to. A dominant nine without the A and yeah, that's oh, okay. So it, that is that's... just the G tritone. Uh, right, right, right. E. Yeah. I wrote it down as C sharp diminished, but uh, it's not C sharp diminished. It's not. It's if you it's... add an E, it is. No, if you add a E, it is a E E minus six. Yeah, basically it's E minus six without E. E minus six without E. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So right. that's actually a tritone chord. It's not a diminished. Right. Wait, wait, diminished wait. would have would have. Uh, I mean, it has to be a B flat if you want a diminished. But there's a B. So there's a G. Wait, wait. There's there's a B. Yeah. Oh, so it's B C sharp G. Yeah. Oh, I see. I didn't hear the B. My bad. My bad. Yeah. So. Okay. So the thing is, this one, again, because of my, um, because I'm I'm not putting the chords straight away. Mm -hmm. Because here I whether when I added, I mean at the late at a later point in the piece, I I do add the E, because over there I'm expressing it as a chord. Wait, wait, wait. But over here, I don't show the E. I, I just these three notes give you the tension. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, actually, the the main notes that I want is the tritone of right. uh, G. But I just add the B so that it stands a little more. You know. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. So uh, the the it, the fun part about not expressing the chord and as a chord is that you get to do all this stuff and right, right. It still works in its own way. And essentially, actually, I actually consider this uh, uh, a dominant chord only, because if you take the next chord, I'm actually resolving it to a D minor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. So it's basically like the a dom to D minor is what's happening. But I see, I see. But I'm not showing the a and the e. Hmm. 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 Yeah. Right. Actually, when you just work out these normal cadences like two five one or whatever mm. but you you just play around with what notes are there and what notes are not there you will get all kinds of colors and it won't even sound like a two five one anymore and <laughs> right, right right but but for the year it will still feel as comfortable as a two five one if you do it right mm. so yeah so then this chord and then i go to the f uh, sorry the d minor as well as and then D minor and then the G seven, and then the usual, the circle of fifths happen and stuff. Mm -hmm. And yeah, then I'm, mm -hmm. sorry, to sorry, go all these, these ukulele lines and is just this uh, standard traditional arranging style. You know. So the harmonium gives you the bed. Harmonium right. and the triangles give you the bed. And the celesta gives you the activity. It's just like when you when you're writing counterpoint for activity, mm -hmm. but the the strings are holding the note. I mean, holding the chord. So you get the harmonic idea, mm -hmm. and then you have all these inner lines happening to keep the activity. Something very similar here. The celesta is doing that part. The harmonium and the the tremolos are holding your the harmonic beat. Yeah, it's kind of. Yeah, that, I never thought of it as as counterpoint the the way you, you just phrased it, but like it, it kind of just turns into a series of of counter melodies that just string the section together. Yes, I mean, see uh, the word, I and mean, we have different words for different things. Right, right. We have counterpoint usually refers to one thing, but if you take the the core of it all, mm -hmm. uh, it is to sustain interest. So. Mm -hmm. 
point i feel the the most uh, functional purpose or thing that the counterpoint does is to sustain interest right. so if having if you're just playing the chord in the downbeat of each bar and let's say the the piece is slow mm. and the melody is going on when you just hold the chord it's relatively boring right uh, so and let's say you don't have a groove uh, again it becomes a little static so just mm-hmm. to give your activities you either write some inner lines sometimes they are melodic lines when they are melodic lines we call it counterpoint right uh, like when the, because the counterpoint is sort of interacting with the main melody but when you're writing a riff or something like that like a groovy thing or a pattern we don't probably call it counterpoint but if right. you take the core of it it's the same thing you're just trying to engage while holding the basic chord or whatever right, so right. you can do that with sound like you're just holding a synth chord and then you're playing with the the cut off or something like that uh through the uh, through the bars like if four bars you're holding a chord mm-hmm. and then the melody is going on just to add some interest you might add add a little pulse or i i mean that also comes here so just to you know when you're playing with all this just to sustain interest basically and we find mm-hmm. different of doing that so i mean that's that's what i'm doing here also i mean imagine if i just remove the soft piano you'll get what i'm saying this is just the chords fana ho raha hu pe chahti hu works but it works a lot better when you have the soft pianos adhuri barishi Yeah, 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 hundred percent. It works a lot better when you're having, and that also this is a very tender instrument. This is a celesta thingy, mm-hmm. so it's really not going to take your attention. It's not going to interrupt your listening in a big way. It's something very subtle that's giving one detail in the background. Mm. So you, your attention will still be on the vocal and the performance only. Right, right. so just these kind of and all these are tender instruments like ukulele is a very tender instrument celesta mm. and even the tremolos so it creates that that mood so mm. to speak and then of course here uh, this is where i i mean this is i consciously did it as an experiment so there are two guitars here one is a steel guitar and the nylon guitar mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. so this is just uh uh what it i mean if if um if i have to say why i did it so the thing is you when you're playing the piano you can really cover a big range right right so mm-hmm. the first idea when i played on the piano i could uh, play up to like two to three octaves in this idea mm-hmm. but when you're playing with a guitar again if you're giving it to one instrument it's going to sound very um busy again right right the steel guitar sort of takes the the space you know yeah so it's got it feels very natural and mm-hmm. then and then dun 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 that's again like a counter melody something so that i'm just giving it to the nylon guitar but the cool part here is credits to keba um because the nylon and guitar electric i mean the sorry the acoustic and the nylon are coming together mm-hmm. he detuned his uh, steel guitar and played so that the steel guitar sounds warmer mm-hmm. and it sort of blends with the nylon guitar much better yeah interesting and also you can slightly pan this left and you know this is all left and oh yeah that's true and long guitar is all right right mm-hmm. just give us a little stereo image as well mm-hmm. 
yeah i mean these are small things and i uh, i think yeah it, it did have other layers as well the ha- harmonium and the piano but i just thought it was too busy so i just removed it well, so what yeah. did you what did you have going on in the harmonium just the i think it was just holding a chord or something and i think there was something wrong with it you know mm-hmm. something like this but i just thought it's not needed for this place and right know. right i see. so this is a call actually i took um after tracking keba so this definitely happens i i always feel sometimes in the programming stage you tend to over produce sometimes mm-hmm. but once you hear the live you just feel that's enough man you don't right. need so once the guitars were tracked it was generating all the beautiful resonances and stuff and uh, so i just thought let's let it just breathe a little bit and i mute the other stuff mm-hmm. interesting and also i think the guitars and vocals alone is a very pretty sound yes i just thought so also here this part was pretty important that the guitars play in this range because so far there's no bass in the song so the bass mm-hmm. comes in yeah from the chorus here right so if, so if you directly do that it will be a stark moment so if you see over here this sort of introduces the bass range you know slowly you are hearing the bass and then when the bass guitar kicks in here it feels a little bit more smoother so just these i mean these are all very normal stuff that i mean we always do I'm just detailing it out because we're discussing it yeah mm-hmm. All right. Um I I don't have anything specific left to ask about this section. So right. if there's anything else from your side we can talk about it. If not, we can move to the next section. Yeah, we can move to the next section. Yeah. Okay. Next would be the from the chorus. Yeah. Yeah. Ek dafa Ek dafa do you have anything specific oh is wh- how on earth did you create that that sound <laughs> is it just what is it is it like a choir that's been yeah so like, first the main layer would be the choir mm-hmm. the backing vocals so that right. was a home recorded choir with a lot of came uh, students and graduates I they see. were part of it let me just find the uh, layer Yeah. I think this is the one. Yeah. That's gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. So this credit to all the singers they actually recorded individually from their homes. Oh, I see. During over time but the uh, they actually managed to find sync in the evolving nature of the vowel so that that thanks to kartik kartik was the choir coordinator mm-hmm. and he got i mean he sent all of them instructions and he got all this to happen so uh, so yeah th- again the the changing vowel is again to sustain interest compared to a straight o oh sound throughout oh slightly changing the vowel again this is playing the same role as a counterpoint this is right, right. the chord is the same everything is the same but you're adding interest by changing it just creates a little bit more drama compared to the regular so when the chord changes they go to u so right right yeah, so <laughs> 
changing. Wait, at, at what point did they go from A to R? I didn't notice that when listening to the 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 actual song. It just seemed like this right. this no, sound. Not yeah. Notice it because these are subtle strokes. Right, right. Meant to uh, you know add interest. You know when mm. you listen. How you because otherwise it's it's just one chord and uh, if if I don't do this then I'll have to do something else to add interest. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So right, right. This is the main layer. and it's a very cold sounding choir which sonically i think for me at least mm. is very different from the very warm palette of um, ukulele and harmonium right right it feels very cold to me so it's a lot of highs and stuff like that and over here um i wanted to add some distorted distorted sounding synths mm. so because i'm lucky to be a good friend of prashant i got him to work for me for free so <laughs> he added uh, synth layers over here he has a real synth yes prophet so i can show you so it's a very ambient sounding layer Mm. and again for interest we added this so when you when you're rhythmically doing the pulse mm. it's oddly rhythmic it just it just sustains your interest to listen through the chord wait 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 so this and this because this is a this is actually a very warm sounding thing for me Yes, and then this is pretty cold, so I thought it makes a nice palette. Along with this, this is a part where I introduced some strings as well. There is a low harmonium here. Again, the pump of the harmonium gives you that interest through the pump. Right, right. Um, and then, of course, uh, I had some brass, but we recorded the horns. So, as you can clearly see, I'm a Michael Jackson fan. This is a great ripoff of that uh, "You Are Not Alone" song. Mm. The pom pom horns that come. Of course, I knew nobody is going to notice it here. <laughs> the layer, so I just gave the notation like that to the horns. And then the strings are there, but I think I muted the strings over here because I didn't see it that much. Actually, I I initially added a very Uh, I added the the harmonics in the strings, but I just thought it was a completely different flavor. I muted it later. Oh, interesting. Yeah, but the thing is, I had to go in either direction. I had to go in the current direction, mm. or I had to go in the strings direction. The strings again makes it very warm and very. Um, at on its own way yeah very warm right. but i thought we'd already had a warm sounding verse a yeah lovely so i thought this should sound a little cold so i removed it mm. and there's also the entry of the bass mm. so yeah so this first time we really have the low end in the song yes jp played the bass and uh, yeah so that's it it's just It's just uh, color wise, yeah. As I said, I wanted to be cold, and again, the it's the song is overall a little warm only. It's not a cold sounding song. Mm. And I introduced strings a little later, and this is 
the entry of the strings, you know, over here. Yeah. Tremolos, not so much harmonics. Again, this is the unmeasured tremolos. They're not really in, it's not in rhythm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, these, just to add sustain, I mean, interest to the sustained portions. Mm -hmm. and over here, again, this is, the idea is just to do a scale shift to the new thing. Right. So for A, I'm going to E. And again, she... She does the same motif, which is the Gagandhuanua's motif, but in the new scale. So Gagandhuanua is what's happening here also. Oh. Gagandhuanua, the same motif, basically. So just to make you feel comfortable, if you're going to a new scale, mm. and if the motif repeats, you have that access point to travel to a new place. Right, right, right. Sort of completely starting with the, if I did not have this, and if I went to verse B, it would have been a little hard True to digest. Thing. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's... When you were talking about, like, the cold choir, did you try to reflect that harmonically in any way? No. Harmonically, generally, I, I really like... The chord is basically... Actually, I don't look at it as a suspended chord because suspended chord means something else for me. Right, right. This chord is basically... Uh, a D major over E. It's actually a D add to over E. So okay. That's the way I look at it. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I mean by when I look at it is, you know, when the same chords, the way you look at it will change the way you use it. So that's what I mean. In the sense, uh, if I looked at it as a suspended, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. It's suspended for me. I, I will use suspended in a different context. Uh, it's it's a non-committal ending. That's what a suspended is for me. Right, right, right. But this for me is more of a. It's like a flavorful. It's actually a more completing feeling for me. When mm -hmm. I also, although technically, this is not the most. Uh, it's not like a tonic or something. Right, right. But for me, this is good enough. It's a. It's a nice. Uh, abstract way to complete stuff mm -hmm. so generally i repeat i mean uh, so i'm also repeating the e note the e note is mm -hmm. there both in the bass as well as in the chord yeah so it, it feels better when you're having that f with the g and then the g on the bass mm -hmm. and the, here the thing is the f uh, sorry not the f um, this the scale is an a right yeah yeah <laughs> with e with d so what happens is because the d major also has a in it mm -hmm. It feels complete for me. Right, right, right. So, yeah. So, it, it, the coldness is more on the sonic side. Right. This is more on the uh, it's just a harmonic choice. And also, it, it lends itself nicely to the next section. Yes. So, it's like because the a bass is already in E, it's like you're just shifting modes. And you're playing mm -hmm. over E. And then you're shifting to the E major itself. It's just like... Yeah standing on e and then you're just shifting from one drag to the other yes yeah so and it's just a smooth transition instead of a very cadence kind of transition and you also foreshadow the uh what would it be c c augmented that comes later on yeah yeah that's just uh, that's just for flavor right right yeah yeah. Did you see it as foreshadowing for later or just as adding flavor to this specific section? Um, okay. No, actually, I didn't think about it as foreshadowing. Mm. It's just that when you're, when you're interpreting the same melody in a new scale, um, yeah, I think probably I was going for a the pa moment. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're going... Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, from E, there is a little the one to par, right? Uh, How do I... Oh, wait, what? Uh, from, wait, the in what should be? D? The one from E. From is, E, oh, okay, okay, okay. 
Oh yeah 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 okay okay that makes sense yeah 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 again it's a very old sound the augmented to the tonic is a very old sound it's you hear it in very old classical pieces and stuff hmm so it also gives you that and also augmented is a very also i think because of the flavor i was stripping on mm-hmm. i think the augmented was a natural choice i didn't uh, yeah because this whole thing of augmented and then you come back to the tonic or you go to the sixth minor mm. these are very flavorful choices of that kind of music so i think it just happened naturally because i was stripping in that flavor hmm interesting yeah so also the, the um uh actually i didn't the, the 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 fun part about going to e is that E is a relative major of uh, C sharp, right? right? Yes. So this are the verse B is entirely in C sharp, Sindhu Bharati C sharp Phrygian mm-hmm. scale. Mm-hmm. Right? So this is an elegant way to go to that instead of directly trying to find a cadential way to go to C sharp. Oh. If I establish the E, the C sharp is a natural. I don't even have to do anything to go to the C sharp. I can just continue with the C sharp. interesting yeah. that's a that's a really interesting way to think about it wow okay yeah so and also uh there's actually this i'd been wanting to do for a long time because when you when you're going to the major third and you're playing a sindhu bharati from there it's pretty much in the major scale of the tonic so Jesus. so over here uh, phrygian from c sharp uh-huh. all the notes naturally belong to the a major scale so i mean so you know i've always wanted to do a, a section b in a phrygian from the third uh, the major third oh so here i just thought i'll do it here that's all <laughs> wow okay the opportunities open up when you think of in terms of i mean it's it's not completely sindhu bharati per se but it, it is phrygian for sure yeah oh wow Sorry, just digesting all of this takes a minute, but <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, it feels like otherworldly ways of approaching harmony. <laughs> so yeah, it's super fascinating. Yeah, so to, to go there and then, um, I mean, the the high for me in this piece was, or in general, I think I like modal stuff. Mm-hmm. because modal stuff when you harmonize it uh, nicely um, i mean when you, if you can go beyond the common practice harmony and yeah. approach cool stuff mm-hmm. i think you get very interesting colors mm-hmm. and i think classical music has done that quite a lot actually like the uh, like uh, you know scales like sindhu bharati or like right. you know, whole tone scales and all all modal scales that we usually avoid because they're not i mean they're sounding too cultural or i don't know how to, like for some reason if if you're avoiding the modals i mean we we tend to like we don't take some ragas for expressing romance and stuff like that so i just thought i'll just play with a lot of these scales here and see if i can do something with it hmm something like that. i mean we, because it, it, it technically i mean straight away the and the augmented chord is a very serious sounding chord yes but but if you can sort of justify it it becomes very interesting and also it takes you to that era of music where these were pretty much common mm-hmm. yeah again all of these i'm i'm rationalizing backwards yeah 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 so many of these were instinctive uh, sorry sorry yeah so many of these were instinctive mm. but when i'm thinking back about it yeah uh, probably these were the subconscious inclinations probably <laughs> right right no i mean it goes back to something you were telling me yesterday when we were testing this out like yeah. if you if you can rationalize your decisions after the fact that means you have a good ear yeah because yeah. you are able to figure it out in the first place exactly with your yeah. ear so yeah 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 wow okay <laughs> I think I'll, I'll have to like re-listen to this section and then like revisit what you've told me to like like put the pieces together. But um, anyways, um 
So uh, if there's anything else, um, you can take us through that. No, I mean, if this not, section, I think it's pretty, I mean, again, the thing is, uh, it's, 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 I really enjoyed playing with the, the opening motif here. Mm -hmm. What is that percussive layer? No, it's just the noise of the harmonium. Oh, whoops, never mind. <laughs> mm. Okay, 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 okay. Again, sorry, sorry. Just kept it. Yeah. So uh, over here, I mean, again, see that that one. Mm -hmm. I'm repeating it here in the new pitch. Right, right. Again, it gives you context. Uh, I mean, uh, somewhere, you know, the thing is, the entire song has only two strong uh, motives. One is mm -hmm. the, da, 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 that, that uh, thing. Yes. And, uh, the other thing is, the, da, 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 da. yeah. So this, keeps, this keeps repeating in various colors and shapes and all that stuff. And, and if, you're, if you're having the same motive, now you can explore uh, what plays it. Like over here, the harmonium plays it and then the mm -hmm. flute. So because verse B is going to have a lot of woodwinds and strings, I'm slowly sort of introducing that over here. Mm -hmm. Strings comes in and then the woodwinds come in. And, you know, when you're doing all that. You see? Yeah, yeah. So just to... And now you know introducing the flute and then the strings are there and then when i'm again bringing it back in verse b it feels smoother so it's all just like fading in a new palette wait 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 consumption yeah yeah so i mean the yeah sorry go ahead yeah, no i mean i'm done as far as i know with this section unless you have something else to ask no i was just going to say like it, it is characteristic of your music at least I'm thinking of this and Kandil Mary, but to use like repeated motives to to piece the song together. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. So over here, I'll just play the verse, the first two lines maybe, and then, mm -hmm. I mean, if you have anything to ask, I can. Ask. Uh, we'll listen first and then okay. uh, we'll go from there, yeah. So something that you were mentioning, uh, we, we've kind of overlooked the vocals a lot um, so far, but right. so something that you were mentioning is uh, when, when we we're testing yesterday is that like based on the section that you really change the treatments. Um, based on the sections, as in? You mean the lyrics? Like, like each, uh, like, you know, every couple of measures, you had a different track because you, you applied different treatments to oh uh, okay no no so right. that's basically um so in, in the mixing stage the thing is because the song mm -hmm. has three palettes right right uh, the way each instrument interacts with the other it's sort of uh i mean sonically 
I had to do treat it differently to make it work. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of it is what I'm saying makes sense. Some of it is just OCD. But so for example, uh, um, yeah. So I, I had to. Okay, over here the piano is interacting in one way. For example. So here, what the piano is interacting with, the instruments are different. Mm. And over here, it is just the piano and the vocal and the white noise. So I had to make this much more fat. Mm. So, so sonically, I separated out each phrase, wherever the, the palette was changing. Mm. And I had to mix it up, mix it accordingly. It's just subtle changes, not big changes. Right, so, right. I see. Some more saturation, maybe a hiss, um, uh, maybe slightly brighter, or I take out. For example, if it's interacting with the guitars and I need more space for the guitars over there, mm. I just uh, scoop out some frequencies. It's just minor stuff like this. Uh, right, right, right. Make the mix, and also because I mean, I, um, I mean, because it's my first mixing project, uh, I didn't. I mean, I just. The, there was there's a natural insecurity whether i'm doing it right or not so i really went all the way to <laughs> do it but but yeah maybe now i'm a little bit more confident in my mixing so maybe now i can solve the same stuff a little more elegantly mm-hmm. okay. i see so wait what are, what are all of the uh, layers inside the vocals then is it the same same kind of situation with the vocals too? It's pretty much no. I have just separated it based on the verse. Oh, I see. Okay. And just minor changes. There's not so many. Uh, yeah. So if you notice over here, if you see Aduri Barishay comes mm. with a different palette compared to this. So just minor changes. Nothing. Nothing too much. And and when I realized that I had a lot of these things to do. Mm. I kind of separated it out straight away. Right, right. So, yeah. And then I could just work on the processing. Even, if, for example, over here, there's a space thing that happens. Uh, ta-da. She sings, right? Uh-huh. So that, I've given a lot more reverb. I see. So I separated that out. Can you feel it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So over here, so just these kind of little, little tweaks, depending on like toward, right towards the end when she's singing with all the strings and horns and everything. Mm. For that line alone, I increase the reverb. These kind of little, little stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So I mean, layers-wise, it's quite thin to start with. It's just uh, mainly like guitars and vocals, if I'm correct. Yeah, yeah. Yep. With all of the strings and woodwinds, I, I, I know it wasn't recorded live, but it, it kind of feels like it's recorded live in, in the way it like swells up and down together. Was there anything in particular that, is it just each individual player like exaggerating the dynamics or so was there? He mm-hmm. didn't record it in the typical way where the ensemble sat together and played it. Right. Because it was COVID lockdown time. Mm. Each string player, like each violinist and each uh, horn player, they played it from their rooms. And then it was all put together and uh, mixed. So, yeah, so it's not a typical uh, orchestral recording where they all sat together. 
so that is so the thing is um because i anyway wanted a little dark sound for the orchestra it's a i've taken off a lot of the highs mm -hmm. so i thought it still, still works i mean it's, it's a decent sound for the song considering it's it's not a pure orchestral piece mm -hmm. so i got, sort of got away with the uh, the this recording style and i thought it got, sort of worked for the song also so i just left it like that mm -hmm. yeah but all the swells were all what the players played and yeah that was all there and the performance itself i see yeah i mean there was a lot of automation let's see where it is yeah if you see there is a lot of automation here and a lot of this credit goes to uh, jokam because he was the one who coordinated with all the players and mm -hmm. he gave me a first draft of the orchestra stems and then of course i worked on it a lot more and then mm -hmm. yeah so yeah it's a i mean these automations are are helping but uh, primarily it's in the performance i see yeah. um, what's the setup there in terms of like num uh like what what are the specific instruments that you have in there so strings i had actually written for uh, six strings mm -hmm. two violins two violas and two cellos okay i wouldn't do that today i that's actually a suboptimal solution for what i ideally want uh, i've learned along the way but why do you say so well because if i may ask mm -hmm. yeah because when you give two violins the same note um, i realize it sounds very fancy so you need at least a few like at least three to four violins when when they're playing the same note mm -hmm. for it to sound like a section so in some parts what had happened is uh, the two violins take a note the two violas take a note and the two cellos take a note uh, and then i had to mute one of the violins because it started sounding crazy i so, see so the i would have arranged it also a little better because i i because i went for a sextet i gave six parts in some places and three parts and four parts in some places so i could have solved it better today i think i can arrange it more optimally and make it sound a little better but mm -hmm. always learn along the way <laughs> so the, i mean the, the quartet is a great sound right. if not i think for this piece i should have gone with maybe three violins and uh, th yeah two to three violas and three cellos would be good mm -hmm. because if if they are playing the same note yeah at least three is a good number i feel Right. Yeah. Woodwinds. I I went. I wrote for eight woodwinds. That's a standard setup. Two flutes, two oboes, two clarinets, and two bassoons. And and horns. There were uh, four horns and uh, three trumpets. Trumpets comes in. I don't think it's really audible in the song because there's just a muted trumpet. And towards the end, trumpet comes. I'll play for you. Yeah, just this part. What, what? So yeah, just the trumpets play that muted part, and towards the end, the trumpets come in for the harmonies, and otherwise, it's just the horns and the woodwinds. Yeah. Okay. So he was saying something about the starting of verse, be something about thin sound or something like that. Over here, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to start off on the guitar because I'm establishing a new, um, it's a new tonal key, mm -hmm. and. Uh, also if you notice i am not straight away showing the new tonal center i am coming with the re chord so very sindhu bairavias thingy uh, so if you see it starts with that um, uh, with it starts with d actually right mm -hmm. so so it's a, it starts with the d but the d is the re one of the yeah uh, c sharp uh, phrygian scale right 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 so it just and then because when the strings come in i wanted the 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 c sharp to be established with a little cadence or not not really cadence but from the strings right 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 stronger 
So, and here, here you know it's the here you know that's the sa. So until then, mm -hmm. starting with the re. Here the sa is established. Mm, mm, so, mm, mm. so it just all the colors from the re. Uh, I don't know exactly like all. It has all kinds of chords. Um, again, I'm just looking at it as different notes from re. Mm -hmm. uh, so it has like uh, it starts off with a regular uh, a D major seven, and then there's a major six, and then there's a tritone added, and then there is a a four, a suspended four uh, with a major seven, all kinds of things. And then it goes to the the last two chords, which is, I think, mm. what is it? D, A, E, F sharp. It goes to the F sharp minor, and then it comes back to the C sharp. C sharp minor. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. Like, like when I was looking at the chords for this section, I I, I fully as like in my mind the key was D major, so yeah. it's it, probably because the opening chord is D major. Right, right, yeah. So that's the thing because in the in the bridge the uh, choir section, mm. the chord is a D over E, right? Right. So right. again, it lends naturally into this D. Mm -hmm. It's just a disguised way of uh, introducing you to the C sharp Phrygian scale compared to a straightaway going to a C sharp. Right, this right, right. Sustains interest again. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's why I, I, I it, it also, took a, yeah. D is also ahead, fourth of A major scale. Yeah, yeah. We're used to the D color in the song so far, but we are not used to the different shades of that scale from D. So that's what this phrase does. Mm -hmm. That one's there, right? So mm -hmm. again, that, okay, my piano is for some reason keep getting switched off. Anyway, so that that again, it uh, before you go to that Ma chord, you're introducing that Ma 2. And it, it, these are little, as I'm saying, I'm saying it out, it feels very um, what do you call it? Logical. It's not that it's just just to introduce all those flavors before you settle down on that Sindhubarevi ish feeling. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Yeah. And then and then here it's you you you're very comfortable with it. Feels very comfortable here with this right, thing. right. So just little stuff like that. And over here, the woodwind trill is actually again. This is a very, um, I mean, it's a very classical romantic era approach. I'm just trying to mirror the lyrics uh, that comes following it. So for the hawa, this was the hawa I had in mind. <laughs> Trills, it's, mm -hmm. the, it's just it's anticipating the singer singing gonna sing hava right right i that's see that's the wind fluttering the woodwind flutter is that for me so it's not that it has to be communicated literally but <laughs> the flavor flavor in my mind right right and here again the lyrics talks about the fragrance mm -hmm. and all that stuff so i just color it up with some woodwinds over here And then everything cuts out after that, pretty so much. And then, and then I'm going to the, again, the main motive, Gurgan, Dua, Dua happens here again. Oh, interesting. And 
Right, you know, right. I see. Here, here I'm coming back to the E, which is again the relative major of the C sharp. Mm -hmm. So again, it's very smooth transition into this. And this uh, section for me was her mental trip suddenly. Suddenly yeah. she starts having doubts. Is everything going to get uh, troubled again and nothing's just going to go off again? Mm. Kind of a little mental trip. And then again, she uh, reaffirms, uh, you know, that uh, to herself that everything is going to be fine. Mm. So this is just a mental trip in between. Right. So it so happened that I, <laughs> for me, I added the white noise thinking it's like a little film amidst the the thing. Mm -hmm. But it so happened that because we shot the fireplace, the white noise was perceived as a the fire. Oh, the fire! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The wood sort of thing. It worked mm -hmm. in a different way. So <laughs> I kind of enjoyed it. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, and here again, I am trying to follow the lyrics when she says "Fiza Jaleto." Yes. So that's when she says Fiza Jaleto, I'm having that whole tone descending scale. Yes. This adds that uh, sort of uh, eerie feeling. Mm -hmm. sort of everything. And even in the video, Sriram, the director, would have done a very nice uh, shift of warm tone visually, if you notice. It'll oh, shift, I see. It'll shift from uh, slightly cold to a very warm tone over there. Just little stuff to. Uh, embellish the place and mm -hmm. uh, and over here I'm mean, this this I really enjoyed actually to bring in the ukulele here so the is very characteristic of the song yeah yeah so I just thought and also it, again it gives you that familiarity there's, there's so many changing palettes see here it's all uh, steel guitar yeah and there's also nylon guitar that imitates the melody a little bit mm -hmm. Here again, we're going to a fully piano thing over here. So when you bring in the ukulele, again, there's a sense of familiarity. And again, the patterns are the same. It is just the opening pattern, but with different chords. Yeah, so the same stuff and again here's some there's an augmented thing here there's also yes. that, there's also uh, i don't know how to say it in english but that e with uh the tritone in the bass yeah i i just wrote uh wait with tritone the, in the bass oh oh yeah. i see smart to saga instead of saga oh wait that's a nice flavor i think it's just this is basically uh but uh, I don't know how to how you name it. Let me see in logic. Okay. I don't know what's the name of this chord, but it's basically a E and then a G it sharp. Just and then kind of the back. kind of this a similar thing to before where like the harmony was just centered that time around C sharp and G, and now yeah. it's just centered around uh B flat and E. So just like a tritone sound. I guess Some, over here actually no over here there's no tritone it's just a oh yeah there is a tritone yes. yeah it's B flat right. yeah right right yeah yeah I mean yeah so over here then after that it goes to the augmented right. chord so the again these are all in the family of chords that we've used already I think the only deviation is that uh, the tritone of uh, right. you know B flat so that's the only thing. Um, so yeah, I mean, and here, this is, these are all very, the, I mean, I really enjoyed bringing in the whole tone scale because that's very characteristic of the WC. WC yeah. <laughs> so the run is also that, and then I would have named it Go Priya actually, because that's a Rag's name. Yeah. See, yeah, see. <laughs> so, <laughs> we hear it in old, those, uh, ghost kind of movies. We hear that scale a lot. I see. You see, and also here, I just had that little horns to just hold the note here. That's just the part. 
is just an augmented chord by the way mm-hmm. augmented chord is a natural of the whole tone scale yes so yeah thing. and this is just to give that uh... Ooh, I see. <laughs> also it breaks the rhythm here which i thought was uh, justifying the lyric about things burning down wait 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 so so yeah and that's it and towards the end uh... again okay, i'm bringing the same palette here of the tremolo and the harmonium wait wait again this gap is sort of justified because of the pump of the harmonium otherwise mm. it would have been boring it would have felt like a... so the pump sort of sustains that interest you know right right uh, yeah and also here actually the bass is not i mean the chord seems like a d but the bass is actually a g sharp that is to lead me oh. to the... subsequent g chord over here yeah i had written it as g sharp diminished add 7 question mark <laughs> because i i noticed that the it's piece just a, it's just a d over uh, g sharp okay 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 that makes sense so in a strange way uh this is like a g, g sharp uh, dominant flat five but i am not showing the third G sharp dominant flat five. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Yes, 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 yes. With with the colors of um, uh, you know, flat nine and flat thirteen. Right, right. I, uh, sorry, it's a G sharp augmented, not yeah, G sharp augmented uh, dominant nine, dominant flat nine. But I'm not showing the third. But this is a complicated way to look at it because it's not how I thought about it. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> how, how I thought about it was that I just sustain the D major mm-hmm. because the melodic note is standing in. a and uh, and i just put the bass to g sharp because that way it would create a tension before right. i put the next chord which is a g that's yes okay yeah. so pya pyar thane nahi that one is it starts with the g right g yeah so when you when the chord when it lands it's not a it's not a ending here so yeah. it's something is amiss here that's because mm. of the G sharp bass. Yes. So you feel that liberation when you go to the pyarthame where it goes to the G. I don't know where that the bass is. Anyway. Oh yeah, here. So here it goes to the G, and then you feel here it's supposed to be like a little victorious thing. No, no. This time things will be fine. But mm. she's just. telling her so that so i just added some horns here where are the horns yeah is just to give that sense of uh, you know positivity yeah 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 mm-hmm. i'm using the same motif that we used in the opening in takitatam that one yes. so this is what we did oh. for yeah 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 so it's just repeating the same kind of idea here over here tera mera again i'm not coming i'm not giving a full resolution by coming back to the tonic yeah 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 Still with d and i'm playing with the kalyani scale from d so it takes all those colors from the lydian scale from d so i'm mm, showing mm. up i'm showing a then i'm showing b then i'm showing e all these kind of stuff let me see if i can connect my piano and uh,
So it's from D, but it's Kalyani, and I'm not showing the G, and which is I'm not showing the F sharp. I see, I see, I see. So it just sustains interest again when you're standing on the melodic note, and also uh, because the bass is D, when the mm -hmm. sajana goes to D sharp, again, yeah, 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 create more interest, right? That's just the Kalyani now in A, basically. Yeah. 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 This is again a modal color shift. And then you're really settling down in the A. And, and the thing is, um, I've, I've put a, a major seven over here. Mm -hmm. Again, a color shift because major seven naturally suggests the D sharp and not the D, but the melody just had a D. So that's why uh, oh. it feels, you know, because a major seven uh, the natural leads color, to Lydian. Yeah. So Lydian. Yeah, yeah, yeah has a D sharp from A, but the melody she just sang uh, Maga, which is a classical resolution from a suspended four to a mm. major thing. And because the major seven is there, the overtone is getting created off the D sharp. So these are just little things to just make it more colorful uh, while coming back to the tonic and you should feel a peace over there. Ah, oh, okay, fine. Mm. Go on. Mm. Yeah. You've arrived and and you just make it as colorful as possible. Just little stuff like this. And I'm again immediately going to the D major 7. That one, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, so these is just, see the, see, the thing is, what we are hearing is one thing, but we always hear in a very subtle way the overtones. Mm -hmm. So when you make those shifts, the you don't know why you're reacting to it, but something happens because it's not the stuff that we're hearing, it's the stuff that we're feeling. So with every B, we are feeling the F sharp also, just that we're not hearing it. Wait, 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 wait. So from a that's why I feel generally a one major seven to a four major seven is always a beautiful moment because you're hearing the tritone when you're hearing the one major seven, but when mm. you go to the four major seven, it's a, it becomes a strong moment because. The four is not not part of the one major seven span. Yes. Yeah. 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 So it's just the same thing. I mean, again, I'm just trying to uh, rationalize. Uh, yes. Or yeah. Rather look, look into why something feels a certain way. But mm. but this yeah this I mean it happens all the time anyway. <laughs> yeah. So I mean uh, what I'm saying is I'm it's not that I um, knew all this and then I put it over there, right, but right. it's sort of when you're going along the way, you're aware of all these color shifts that are happening and, and then you're just um, making it, making use of it uh, mm. to serve the, the purpose of the song and the emotional ideas that you're dealing with. Right, right. Did I just lose you? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, uh, part of it is just me like processing everything, but, um, <laughs> but no, it, it does make sense. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have a seventh there? Where? Which one? In that, uh, that yeah, piano. Yeah, no. The major seven. Oh, Angio 7, okay. Uh, 7, okay. So, again, the is very natural for the G major 7 scale. So, let's get Lydian from G again. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And then you're going to a E add 4. E add 4. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to uh, D, D Lydian. Actually, at D, if I name it, it has to be D six nine add. Add, I don't know what. Add five. Yeah. D six nine. Wait, which chord is this? No, no, don't look at it that way. Just play a Kalyani from D. Okay. okay. <laughs> you look at it that way. It becomes very, very complicated.
And what was so, wait? So for at Sajana, are you thinking in your wait? I'm I'm Sajana. I'm already back to A. Oh, okay. So you. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, okay. Yeah. And I'm not. I don't think I'm changing the base. It's just A, and then. I'm sustaining the A, but I'm just going to all these Kalyani colors. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, 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 okay. But Sajana doesn't have a major seven. It's just a straight add two. It's a mm. strong moment, right? Major seven is yes. making more. So a straight A major would, would be nicer, especially if you're making the moment to. Uh, wait, wait. Two major with the sustained base. And yeah, that basically leads us back to the, back. yeah. And uh, so it's a pretty long verse B, and it's also it's it's a uh, I mean we have explored quite a bit. So I wanted a lot of space here, mm-hmm. uh, sort of non-musical space, to just sort of settle back and you know find your ground again. So. Yeah. Also, I was listening to Billie Eilish at this point in time. So okay. a track of uh, hers called "I Love You," where she would have liberally used a lot of SFX in her in the track. So I was very inspired okay. by that. So I just thought I'll just embed all these uh, room tones and rain and all kinds of stuff into the palette. I mean, I anyway had I I generally like uh, having SFX. Many times I have SFX, but Mm. track i saw how it was uh, an essential part of the arrangement like it's not just an embellishment you take out the sfx some of the parts just won't stand you know mm-hmm. like that. so i just wanted to explore that uh, idea here i see and i just i had all these room tones and there's a sfx layer yeah so all these pain and stuff like that wait right. Wait, are are those like sound effects literally off YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> also, if you notice, one of the reasons I didn't have a bass when I landed back in A was because I wanted to create space for this this rumble, which has a lot of bass. I see, I see. So this one it ends without a bass. Yeah, yeah. Bass. Yeah, there is a bass. So when there's no bass, and then you're hearing the rumble, it gains more prominence. Yes. Yeah. So, and then of course the the thing of she and the na- nature interacting. I wanted that vibe, so we had this. Again, I'm bringing back the motif. Yes. Again, this ta 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 was just to break the rhythm. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just like you know what you do with the shakers when you're ending a phrase or something. You do shh, right? Mm-hmm. So something like that. That's what this is meant to be. It's just like shake yourself before you enter a new section, sort of thing. That pop, 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 pop. Please. Yes, yes. Yeah, so that's I don't know what else I can talk about here. That's so I tried to do that at the clock ticking, but it didn't work. So I did that with the thing. Yeah. Oh. And this this is just the cello along with a unison. Mm-hmm. So one thing that um, the the classical music has a lot of, especially the romantic. time whenever i have heard i have heard a lot of octaves and unisons mm-hmm. 
which is a very powerful element you know the yeah so i just wanted to try a vocal and cello unison over there mm. they cover different ranges and yeah that's it and again this gives perspective to go back so if you actually notice verse a is preceded by this motif verse b is preceded by the same motif in its own key and again yes. the verse a is again having this motif so it just gives you that little uh, introduction and right. context and invoke invokes your memory a little bit so that's the idea the main difference here is the the chords that you put at the last two notes what is it yeah it is. something like that diminish to the minor minor yeah so yeah that's because i had to go to the i wanted to start the return of the section with the c sharp minor instead mm-hmm. of major because i wanted to be a little melancholic yeah to go to c sharp if it's easier if you go from uh, uh, g sharp minor it's a natural progression mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. yeah couple of fifths so g sharp to c sharp so to go to g sharp i did that diminished and then went to g sharp and then <laughs> went to c sharp minor interesting yeah i i i love how i mean this is something you do throughout the song but i think it's most prominent here that you have the same melody but in a completely different context that's that's really really beautiful but yeah that's something you do like a ton throughout the song because you have the the same motif um right. yeah. coming up in, in different contexts yeah. yeah yeah and also when you're playing the same motif with um uh a new instrument it just has some more color right right just as playing it and stuff yeah and also that's a very characteristic thing of the celesta you can play those chords and it's very mm. it's, it's got it's got the celesta kind of thing right so yeah 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 again the instrument also could have given that idea i see they are jamming the same idea on the instrument instead of playing the chord straight the piano has a beauty when you play it straight Mm-hmm. and this has a beauty when you're doing the kind of yeah thing. yeah yeah so yeah is this yeah something i think that just happened at that point in time i don't think there's anything else to discuss in this session this is a very empty section it's mainly sfx and i wanted to buy enough time to get back to the main melody again mm-hmm. so just did it and i again one way is to do it musically the other way is to do it this is more like a film scoring kind of attitude mm-hmm. it's I also the uh, more again i was very inspired by the billy elish track mm-hmm. so all these things just sudden came together i see yeah all right then should we move to the the ending oh, section yeah. yeah yeah so i just played it once
Yeah, one one thing I really like about this section is um the the rhythmic shifts. It it kind of brings in a more like triplet feel, which changes our, our perception of like speed almost. It like even if the song itself isn't necessarily slowing down or speeding up, when you yeah, especially with those like triplet block chords they have, yeah. Yeah, that's actually I had uh, the idea of a candle fluttering over here, so I, I see sort of represent that musically. Mm. We even tried to shoot it visually, but uh, uh, we we did shoot it, but it didn't come out the way we wanted it to come. I see. We just uh, removed that, but yeah. So these, I think you're talking about these, right? in my mind it was the fluttering of the candle uh, you know and the, the shadow being on her face that kind of a thing i see so also it adds interest again you know because as you said rhythmically it's it's a very slow track so mm-hmm. it just adds some more interest yeah it kind of made it feel slower for me is that just me no no like these are just I mean, you're just playing with time. Very, very. Actually, on that note, if you see the tempo graph of the song, I've played with the time. Yes. So, so wherever uh, naturally, when you're singing, sometimes you know, like for example, let's say you're singing the tune to somebody on just the piano. Mm-hmm. There's no arrangement and stuff. You pause and you breathe in certain parts and you right. rush in certain parts, right? To based on the melody. Mm-hmm. I just thought because it's somebody sitting alone and singing, I just thought it should have that element. And so, depending on you know, um, and I also feel this whole metronome is is not really a must in productions. I mean, metronome has its own beauty mm. in certain kind of uh, tracks, uh, but it's not like a hard and fast rule that the metronome has to be same throughout. Right. Uh, because I mean, it's a digital metronome, right? And we are not. I mean, if you're an orchestra is playing together, they're actually feeding off each other. Uh, any live band, they're feeding off each other. But so, to some extent, yes, you can keep time. But for these kind of tracks, the dynamics is everything. So, I just thought wherever I feel like the melody needs space. See, for example, I'll play with the click over here. <laughs> you see, I needed some space for the gulmohar. Mm-hmm. I just brought down the tempo here, and right, you don't right. you don't feel it as some tempo shifting. It's a very natural. You see, mm-hmm. those kind of things, and even somewhere over here, and little stuff. See over here, it's hundred, and here it's ninety six. This is what mm-hmm. happens in real life, right? Right, 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 right. So the small shifts like this, and even here. I just needed that space over there. Mm. So, so, in general, I was doing it throughout, and uh, over here, so that's one thing. So over here, because there is a gap over here, mm. and. Uh, if you see the it's not like the earlier time where the arrangement is very sparse yeah and the whole point of the arrangement was to create those and feel those gaps mm-hmm. but here there is a strings that sort of backing throughout mm-hmm. so if you just take the vocals and the strings So, so the thing is now this is very bland. Mm-hmm. Spice it up, you know, 
I had to have something, and I just thought I can do that piano idea. Right, right. Yeah, it was just that. And quarterly, it becomes interesting as well. Yeah, over here, actually, these are all just variations of. You, you just kind of change the bass on F sharp minor, basically, kind of. F sharp. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, the whole thing goes to the little minor, actually. The same melody. I, oh, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only in Gulmohar say it comes back to the uh, A again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Until then, it's all. C sharp note, and then I'm just yeah. going all the other flavors. Like there's also that um, what is that? What is that called? E E major six again that comes towards the end. Basically, the the C sharp keeps just it just there all the time. Mm -hmm. And then again we have Gulmohar say, and uh, over here maybe this I can talk about. <laughs> Okay, so the idea in my mind was, you know, sometimes when you're alone and uh, ruminating and stuff, mm -hmm. you have these um, these angry gasps or whatever that you call it is. I don't know how how I can explain it. Like you're just thinking something, and you're like, "Oh shucks!" Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. So that's what I wanted to do. I see. Like I see. I see. I see. And singing and all that stuff, and then in between, she just has a burst of uh, exasperation or whatever, uh -huh. and then and she again continues. That that's that was the idea. Actually, it came out slightly differently from what I had initially imagined. I wanted it to be much more dynamic like from a me uh, mezzo piano to a FF sort of thing and then come back to something very soft. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, it didn't work out like that. But I, I just let it flow how, uh, like how it came together. Mm -hmm. So that the idea was that over here. So I see. So even if you notice, you would have sung differently over here. <laughs> So I just wanted that little, um, yeah, a very human moment amidst the very musical. So mm. That was the idea. But I, I also, again, I made it musically uh, tangible. So I just had a little, uh, what was it? It's a regular 251 back to. So it's basically from a C sharp minor with mm -hmm. color, mm -hmm. C sharp minor with colors, and then it goes to a, a uh, F, F sharp, sharp minor again with colors. And then B really, e minor. This, this is the C sharp chord, and then this is the F sharp. <laughs> and then I just leave it there, and then the flute sort of brings you back to the. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the da, 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 I, the the flute plays that, and then it comes back to Adhuri Barushe. Adhuri Barushe again. Last time it was directly C sharp major. But this yeah. time it starts with the B minor, and then B. it goes to the C sharp C major. C sharp minor. C sharp minor. Major. Yes. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes, major is correct. Bye, bye. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, and then again, instead of that three note chord that we had the tritone in the verse A, oh. here I just, I just play the minus six, the E minus six. Right, right. Oh. 
and then mm, so over here i do again the for hargadi i go to this uh, d major instead of uh, yes. i didn't want to i didn't want to complete the piece straight away mm-hmm. uh, so initially it was like that but when i after the first vocal recording when i heard it i just felt that place needed more space mm. so i just uh, i i called preetika and asked her to include one more line and she had that her gadi you so over there i went to the d and then i again introduced the motif over there in the celesta yes and then back to the main thing and that i could do it I mean, musically it was pretty easy for me to maneuver the tone of that so once you go here i'm again introducing this uh, the main motif here mm-hmm. celesta and then there's a little breather over here and uh, yeah. just for some cinematic uh, quality i added the clock ticking mm mm-hmm. uh, so <laughs> yeah i mean that is just again man you just tripping on that vibe and then and then there's a little piano uh, playing the mohanam of uh, the d mm mm yeah and then again there's a direct parallel minor it goes to da, da, da. same as same as the in verse yeah 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 is here i slowed down the tempo here because i wanted those big cello moments mm-hmm. so yeah those cellos are gorgeous so yeah for this i just okay it feels like it's flowing normally in the same tempo but the tempo is changing a lot mm-hmm. but see you don't feel it right yeah yeah so I mean because that's how I think when a real orchestra plays and the singer they look at each other and this is what they will end up doing. Mm. So I just try to imitate that in the tempo graph. That's what an ending I'm as I said for me this chord is not a suspended chord for me even though it is technically. Mm. It's just a it's a happy resolution. It's not a happy resolution. It's not like a super happy resolution. Yeah, yeah. It's a But satisfying. It's, yeah, for me it's a it's it just works and it and also if you see the melody is ending in pa which is not really climactic mm, for me mm, yeah mm. Mm. so it's anyway not a very resolving sort of ending for the melody so i just for me this chord was good enough for the end so i just had that the same d over e and for activity the same stuff i had a little line in the celesta the celesta that was happening and then all the synths repeated so if you notice on this here yeah so this actually i had a more horn trumpets kind of sound for the end mm. more than the strings because again that's a, um you know for me this gives a very 1940s 50s kind of vibe 
so i wanted this sound but in the mix i think uh, it's not that dominating it's sort of that's mm-hmm. a little color and towards the end again first i have the chords that are being held you hear that little articulation so yeah 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 that's to give some dynamism to the chord that's being held and i'm having the same this and just some textures with the harmonium so this synth gave me the tail that i needed i needed like a really slow yeah pattern. yeah yeah so instead of doing it with automation this synth naturally had that thing i see and you clearly just some tremolos uh, and stuff this and this took care of the yeah 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 That's beautiful. I love that. It sounds like fur a less when you just hear it separately. <laughs> <laughs> And that's it. And uh, this is JP bass just playing the bass note. So yeah. That's about it. Wow. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. At, at points like it, it it does feel really overwhelming. I know you you speak about it really simply, but like there's just so much to it, but it all comes together somehow. And like my tiny brain can't comprehend that, but um <laughs> hopefully somebody's brain can. <laughs> when you when you're speaking about something, hmm. Uh, see a lot of the craft that you pick up over the years is sort of internalized but right 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 when we put it out in words it always sounds more uh, i don't know more complex than it is also Fair. some okay. uh, some of what i've said are natural choices but i'm just yeah. talking why that works, works. for the Right, 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 right. It's not why is something. For example, an F over a B, or uh, mm-hmm. you know something like that. Or oh, sorry, not that. Sorry, uh, the D over a G. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The D over a E. That one, it's it anyway. It's something that everybody plays. But why it sort of works in the context when we get into that, it's very interesting to. understand so right right aware when you're making these choices with awareness uh so when awareness and instinct go together you you can sort of tweak your experience in a certain way mm-hmm. you know it just gives you those uh, like if you really want to express something in a particular way and if you have that instinct uh, coupled with awareness of why it's working mm-hmm. you sort of get where you want to You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Something like that. Like, for example, even the the movement from uh, um, uh, G sharp to G in the bass. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So uh, technically, the um, what is it called? The uh, D over G sharp is not a logical chord. I mean, it's it's a weird chord technically. Yeah, yeah. Because you're having the tritone on the bass and you're playing the chord. Correct. Yeah. So. but uh, so i had if you ask me whether you will use that chord anywhere i'll have no idea i still want to make sense because the chord is like this right right mm-hmm. yeah. but the context makes you you know put that chord mm-hmm. because you I know see. you are you need that big feeling when you go to the so how are you going to get there is when that feels good 
This is not a good sounding chord per se. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the context, you're giving this F major, but uh, on the higher scale to the guitar, which is a very feeble instrument. So that can take the bass B, which is almost an octave and a half below. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to express this chord as a one unit in the piano. Then I shouldn't be arranging it like this. I should change it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your instrument also determines how you arrange and how you voice it. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying these things are, you would make natural choices as you go along. That's because of the craft you've internalized over the years. Right, 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 right. But of course, when we talk about why it's working, that becomes a very um, explorative topic. So mm. some, to some extent, what we've discussed today is the why of something, why is it working? Mm. Yeah. Uh, why does the mind find something easier? Although elementally, it doesn't seem easy. Mm, 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 mm. So, but yeah, but if you are arranging, I'm sure every track like this will have its own. Uh, if you get into the reasons of why something works, right, right. It will have its reasons. But it's not necessary that the composer has to think of all this before he does it. And it doesn't Correct. work like that. You can't do it. Yes. Okay. As I said, it's, it's guided intuition, you know. Mm, mm. Uh, that really, you know, helps you craft your stuff. Because what you'll do in, in the first stroke, you will get a melody and you'll think, oh, mm -hmm. this melody is very beautiful. Mm -hmm. okay. And then you will get another melody. And then you'll be thinking, it'll be very, very nice if you have both these melodies working like this in the song. And then, but you'll need the craft to sort of justify it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I mean, so that's why probably when we discuss about it, it feels a little bit more uh, complex, but when you're actually doing it, you will make these choices instinctively at some level. Mm -hmm. But of course, the more you work on the craft parallelly, you yeah. you will have uh, access to more choices. Correct. You know? yeah. If you have lesser choices, then you'll have to work within that. Mm -hmm. so that's where the generally when you keep trying to improve your craft, it helps. Makes sense. All right, then uh, for this session, uh, I, I guess we'll, we'll close it off here. Um, if anybody's uh, stuck around for, how long has it been? Three hours? Oh, no, not, not quite. Two and a half, something like that. Yeah, so um, more than anything, uh, thank you to, to Prasanna, obviously, uh, who has graciously uh, given a couple of hours of his time today and also to test things out yesterday. Um, and thank you to everyone that has uh, tuned in. Um, and yeah, if you enjoyed it, let me know. If you want more of this kind of thing, uh, let me know accordingly. Thank you so much. And thank you, man. Thanks for having me. And I'm sorry that my laptop suddenly conked off along the way and the video feed went off. All good, all good. But anyway, thank you so much for having me. Thanks a lot. Perfect. <laughs>